Hi, I'm Diva from Musical Hell, and I know the score. And now, from the files of neat stuff that exists thanks to crowdfunding, I give you Karma Flow, the rock opera video game. Karma Flow started in 2012 as a graduate project headed by Dutch composer Ivo van Dijk who wanted to explore music as a means of interactive storytelling in video games. The project launched an Indiegogo campaign in 2013, and unfortunately only earned a little under two-thirds of its goal. But despite the shortfall, Van Dyck was able to assemble a cast including singers from bands such as Dragon Force, Epica, and Cradle of Filth, hire Metropole Orchestra for the soundtrack, and even mount a concert version of the story in 2014. Eventually, Karma Flow was released by Basecamp Games in two stages, with Act 1 premiering in January 2015 and Act 2 released the following April. The game is a puzzle platformer that has kind of a Maxfield Parish meets Dave McKean look to it. The player is the Karma Keeper, a sort of angel, alien, shaman type thing who visits worlds suffering from an affliction known as the Dissonance. You progress through the game by manipulating karma between objects and dealing with various other challenges. Ultimately, the Keeper confronts the Guardian of each world, learns what happened, and must decide whether to save the world or leave it to the Dissonance. Which is not as simple as it sounds. For example, do you reunite a suffering guardian with his soulmate, or force him to continue caring for his world alone? Aren't decay and destruction a necessary part of the creative cycle? And what is the Keeper's true purpose, and is it a just one? And the big question, who cares, what about the gameplay and the music? Probably because of the restricted budget, Karma Flow does feel like a work in progress in places. The gameplay is a little choppy, and there are still several bugs that the developers are working out, though most of the major ones have been dealt with. And there are a few bugs in the music as well, mostly in the lyrics, which are kind of fuzzy on the English. But overall, the score is Karma Flow's single biggest asset. True to the subtitle, everything that can be sung in this game is. The cutscenes, the bonus information, even the tutorial is sung. I'll show you the All of this makes for a lot of good music. Van Dyck's roots are in power metal, so there's plenty of driving guitar and drums, dramatic orchestral arrangements, and passionate melodies. The powerful, conflicting emotions are usually demonstrated in Beauty and Beast-style vocals, sometimes within the same character. In World 1, the muse has been possessed by the dissonance and is only occasionally aware of her actions, which becomes very clear as you listen to her. other influences at work here, including electronic, folk, and even a Tibetan Buddhist-like chant in one section. Each world has a distinct sound to it. The technological, underground world of the heart features distinct pulse beats and minimal open arrangements in the underscore, while the majestic realm of the twins features a more elegant lyrical sound.
and this being a video game, the player's actions have an effect on the soundtrack. Some of these are obvious, making one choice over another in a cutscene decides which song track gets played, while others are more subtle. In one of my favorite puzzles, the player has to activate various instruments in order to open the path to the next zone, causing the soundtrack to build as the keeper progresses. Despite its flaws, the impressive soundtrack and use of music make Karma Flow worth checking out, especially if you enjoy fantasy-esque European metal like Nightwish or Within Temptation. And I'd like to see Van Dyck work more with the rock opera video game concept, either by expanding this universe or designing another one. The game is available on Steam and comes with a copy of the official soundtrack, so even if you don't enjoy playing it, you can still enjoy listening to it. I'm Diva. I know the score, and now, so do you.